and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Towers of Amharb. It's by Modius Game Design, plays two to four players, takes 30 to 45 minutes to play, and it's for ages 14 and up. And in the game Towers of Amharb, you're basically playing as a sect of cultists. They are trying to awaken their favorite old one. There are multiple different old ones to play in the game, and your objective is pretty simple. You want to place your cultists on the board to secure areas to gain the most victory points at the end of the game. On your turn, you're going to have a stack or a set of these little guys here, these little tiles. You're going to take the top of them, place it somewhere, and then you're going to move one of your cultists onto the board, trying to secure locations next to other locations that give you victory points for having the most cultists around them at the end of the game. If you can secure those locations, they'll score you points, and then you're going to tally up all those points and win. Additionally, there are each of the uh, different cultists are going to have a specific old one that they're worshipping, and they'll have their own unique abilities, whether you're playing against Cthulhu, Haster, uh, Yogg-Soth, or Shub Nigroth, or uh, what else we have here, Nirlanthanthop, I don't know, a whole bunch of different types of these guys here, and they'll have one unique ability for them each. The game plays very simply, but it has some unique aspects to it, it has an additional playstyle based on the different types of characters you use, and then there's little flames that will help you assist with gaining victory points at the end of the game. Nevertheless, that's the basic idea for the game, let's go and take a look down below where I will show you what comes in the game and a basic idea of how to play. So here's Towers of Amharb, and it's set up for two players. And as you can see, this stuff's pretty simple. There are the different characters you can choose from, or old ones, as you would say. You're basically going to take two of them at random, and then you're going to look at them, select one of them, and place it next to, uh, I don't know, your player area. So you can choose from between all these different ones here. I'll shuffle them up and just pick two here, and then I'm going to go ahead and select one of them and place it over here as well. And those are your characters you'll be using for the entire game. They all play pretty much the same way, but they each have their own unique player power, which is going to cost these little tokens on the board that you can gain when placing cultists down on the board. This is set up for two players here, and there are multiple ways you can set the game up. Uh, there's some examples in the book, as well as, of course, you can go ahead and set up your own. These pieces here are just extras that are set aside, and these three here are used depending on the characters that are associated with them. Every player is going to get these tokens, these or these little tiles here, or placement pieces here, that are going to be set up just like this at the large just the smallest, as well as three cult leaders, six cultists, and then three flames for scoring. If you're only playing two players, you won't need these, so you can go ahead and set them aside, as well as additional player boards, or boards that will make up the game. Go ahead and set these aside as well. And then you're going to follow the turn order on these player boards here. The first thing you're going to do is go ahead and make sure you're playing adjacent to each other, and place your piles on each of these uh, columns here. So the green player is playing like this, and the blue player is playing like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. On your turn, it's fairly simple. You're going to take the topmost piece of any stack, and you're going to place it down on any of the areas. I'll go ahead and place it just like that. And then you're going to go ahead and place either a cult leader or a cultist on that specific column. So in this case, I can go ahead and take this, and maybe I want to place it right here. And when I place, I take the little token, and I place it off to the side of the board near my player area. This is my resources that will allow me to use my player abilities if I want. So I'll go ahead and move, ability, place, take. After I've done that, then it's going to go around clockwise as well. The next player will go ahead and do the same thing. Place a player ability, then go ahead and place, and take. And you're just going to keep doing that over and over again as you continue moving these pieces around, placing them down, as long as it follows the column, and taking the extra resources. Maybe I want actually two blue ones, so that way I can facilitate my uh, ability that I can go ahead and use. And that's the basic, it. That's, that's it. And the objective, of course, is to gather your cultists around these areas here. These are basically scoring locations, which means if you have a character anywhere around it, that will give you one area control point. Now, these large cult leaders will give you two. So in this case, if at the end of the game, you had one here and one here, that's going to be three points for this one specifically here, three points for this one specifically here, and then one point for the five, whereas this guy actually has one point as well. And you're just trying to basically gain control of each of these areas throughout this entire board, collecting these pieces here to use your special character ability, and making sure to choose where to place these guys. Additionally, when you place your units down, depending where you place them, it's going to increase with a cost. So for instance, if I wanted to, let's say, place this, let's go ahead 
and say this guy wants to go ahead and place this here, take one of his cultists and place it right here, there's going to be a cost of one associated with this character because it's next to one character. And that cost can be reduced based on the level of your little tower over here. So right now it's just at a one. So it's going to be a level one with this one here, which means it's gonna cost one to place uh, this character here because it's next to this one here. And it's actually gonna be increased in cost based on the characters that surround this player here. So be careful where you place and you have to use these resources in order to uh, be able to place certain areas on the game board. So in this case, I'd have to lose this one here. And that's pretty much the idea of the game. After everybody places these characters down, you're going to score the board, tally up the amount of points you have, and whoever has the most is the winner. Additionally, you'll flip over this board here. This is actually the scoring section of the board where you'll use your little flames. I'm going to take this here. This is actually a flame and it should be a cultist. But you'll take this flame and you'll move it up and that will score you points. And you're basically trying to see how many points you have. And whoever has the most points at the end is the winner of the game. Pretty simple in nature, but with a unique little twist on top of the fact that if I wanted to one one turn I can actually take this and place it as long as it is the lo smallest piece on the stack so you can actually you'll eventually be doing stuff like this moving this around here you can do this you can do this which will reduce costs to be able to place in certain areas I think you get the idea for the basic idea of towers let's come up and talk about it towers of Anharb is basically an area control game at its core the unique aspect that this game has is of course the movement in the game associated with these little pieces here where you're always going to take the top one and move it to an area and then you're going to place in that column and on your next turn you can take this one and move it to another area or simply put this one back or move it to another area and the reason why you're going to want to move these to facilitate uh, your movement is because as you stack them and you place them in certain areas it will reduce the cost of placing your cultists as the game progresses when you need to place your cultists next to other players cultists you'll be utilizing your tokens to either spend to place or to spend for your unique special powers located on your game board each of them has a unique power that will do something different whether it be allowing you to break certain rules to the game allowing you to place in certain areas or use certain markers that will come with the game as bonus pieces there's places that you can lock there's places that will allow you to move these pieces in certain areas there are also additionally these books that will give you powers all of them do different things things which is very nice so every time you play the game you're gonna play with a different type of old one that you're worshiping which would come with some unique power every time you play as well you're able to change the board up you can increase the size of the board for the larger number of players and every time you play it's going to be a quick and easy game to explain and set up the game maybe took maybe two three minutes to relearn because it was that simple even though you played this a couple times a while ago but nevertheless it was like oh okay i remember how to play this game and this game was a lot of fun i really enjoy towers it's really cool how you move the pieces around I like area control games and you can also see what you're doing wrong when you're doing it wrong and adjust that play throughout the game and in addition of course as you play this game the more you play the better you're going to get with it the quality of the components is high and very very nice as well I love the feeling of these pieces and moving them around is very nice as well as the different type of meeple cultists you're going to get placing them on the board taking those tokens while tokens necessarily aren't going to win you the game they will definitely allow you to use certain powers that will increase your ability to potentially win the game as well as when you need that specific space on the board and you can't get it without spending you can choose to spend those tokens tokens as well to place on certain boards. Overall, a satisfying game. It feels good moving the pieces and placing them. You know how you get that feeling like, oh, I like placing it just like that. This game does that for me. Uh, the game is rather simple as to where you want to place things. It's just sometimes you might not be able to, so you'll have to make the next best move, which can happen quite often. You always feel like you're limited on movement based on utilizing these things, but you're surprisingly not as limited as you may think. And as you play and get better and better, you'll start learning new techniques and tactics to try and make your t tower larger in size, reducing the cost to place certain areas, and gaining control of certain aspects of the board that are obviously much better than others. Realistically, it's going to come down to knowing the board, understanding what your opponents are trying to do, and attempting to stop them while utilizing your powers. If you like a game that involves area control, has high quality components, a beautiful design, along with the HP Lovecraft theme, Towers of Anne Harb is something I'd suggest taking a look at in the description down below, currently available for you to pick up.